Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and I have some more Rider Waite Smith decks to show. I, uh, I thought I was done buying Rider Waite Smith decks, but I found a couple on eBay recently that made me pull the trigger and get them. And since I'm going to unbox them and show them, I thought I would compare them to some other Rider Waite decks so that you could get a feel for what they look like compared to my other decks. What I have here is I have the Centennial. I have, this is the, the one that you can get right now if you order it off of Amazon. This is my 80s version of the yellow box. You can see the back. Um, it has an ISBN number on it, but it's no barcode, no website, and printed in Switzerland. And this is one I got off of eBay. It came today. This is an AGM deck that was printed in the 90s that came in this case that looks like a VHS, an old-fashioned VHS case. And also today came the Los Carabillo version of the Pamela Coleman Smith, Rider Waite Smith, which has taken all of my self-control not to open in the five or six hours since it came until I had a little bit, little bit of natural light where I could do this video. So I'm going to show you these two decks and then we'll do a little bit of comparisons with the other decks that I have so that we can see if they're, see if they're differences, what the differences look like, that sort of thing. And naturally the, the Waitsmith Centennial will have differences. Now this one I did take out of the box. It has a very different book because this is an AG, um, AG Mueller deck. This is, it's got the U.S. Games copyright on the cards but the book is completely different and the book is a little interesting. It is by Gunter Hager and it's a pocket guide to the tarot and he, we have author's notes, tarot origins, the responsibility of a reader, choosing a deck, notes on the catalogs of meanings, and then we move into the card meanings. And interestingly, it shows two pictures for each card. It shows, this is actually the one JJ Swiss, and this is the Rider Wright Smith. But if anybody who has the one JJ Swiss knows that these titles are just wrong, it's like they lifted the title from the Rider Wright Smith and just attached it to this image from the one JJ Swiss, which I have, and I could go pull out if I really felt like it, but I don't really feel like it right now. So it goes through and talks about each of the cards. It is a bit doom and gloom, but I haven't read the whole thing. I've just skimmed through a little bit of it. Um, and then you have some practical use preparing to read the cards. The significator, laying out the cards, and several different spreads. Interesting. This was printed in 1995. This is the second printing, printed in 1995. The cards themselves, the cards that I got, had a blank card. Sorry. They had a blank card and the other titles card by US, and it has US Game Systems. And I don't know if it's going to focus. But you can see it has the U.S. Games copyright at the bottom, which I was expecting. I was not expecting this to be a copyright-free deck. But I just thought, I found it on eBay, and even including shipping, it was less than $20. So I thought I'd get it and see what it was all about. I did discover that a couple of cards have some damage. It looks like maybe a binder clip or a paper clip was used on them and left too long. But the cards look pretty much like... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're Rider Waite Smith cards. I'm not going to show them to you. I was a little bit disappointed in the card stock. It is a bit flimsy. I, um, my other 90s deck that came in the yellow box has better card stock than this does. And that, that really kind of surprised me. So now we will open this one, and then we'll start doing some comparisons. Alright, it's Los Garabia, so I'm expecting it in many, many languages, which is correct. Um, very 
short descriptions. A little bit about Arthur Edward White and Pamela Coleman Smith. Finding the purpose. And all right. The collection was edited by, I'm not even going to try, but it's kind of obvious when I saw the pictures on the internet, this is not the same coloring uh, and it looked very interesting. First of all, the backs are the rose and lily backs, but in completely different coloration and I love it with sort of an olive green and a red and a, a beige, but the white borders on the back. Eh. And the coloration, interesting, interesting. Yeah, her, her signatures are there. The colors look like they were done with watercolors rather than, I don't know. I don't know what they look like. But this has got a bit of a smoky look to it, like somebody spilled something on it. But it's brand new. Cardstock, Los Garibay, lovely cardstock. The lines seem pretty thick, but I really like the colors. I was kind of hoping for lines that were more like, like this, but these, these do seem kind of thick. And we're not getting pixies. While we're not getting pixies lettering at the bottom, I, I do in I like the the lettering. It's it's really it's very atmospheric. And his face is great. His face. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. I like this coloration. I love that sort of seafoam green back there. He looks cross. And I'm not going to go through every single card on this deck and that kind of detail. It is still the Rider Waite Smith deck. It does have pixie signatures on it. It does look like it's been just the color, the color's been added differently. And it looks pretty. I like it. Mmm, beautiful. It's like the Radiant Rider Waite Smith, um, but with the colors a little bit more muted. Oh, and the Oh Shit line is gone. So I'll look at that a little more closely when we compare to the Sun, the sun card. Because these Roman numerals are not Pixie's numerals. Because Pixie drew those Roman numerals. These Roman numerals have been added. But all in, oh, that sky is just gorgeous. All in all, I'm thinking that I'm, I'm going to like this deck and I might actually use it. So let's start pulling out comparisons. Okay, so here we have five different Rider Waite Smith decks. This is the one, the A.G. Mueller one that I just got that was from 1995 with the, the not-so-good cardstock. This is the Los Carabeo ones, brand new. This is my 80s Rider Waite Smith, which is actually, I think, my favorite still. This is the modern printing of the Rider Waite Smith, and this is the Centennial Edition, so that you can have a see, um, see the difference in the colors. And actually, I'm going to switch these two so that you can see the 90s. A.G. Mueller right next to the 80s U.S. games. I don't know if it reads on camera, but there are slight differences in the coloration of these cards. This is going to be a little bit brighter. This is going to be a, just a tad more muted. And this is even more muted than the Centennial. So we're going to look at the Fool, the Lovers, and the Sun card in these, these decks. Alright, let's move on to the Lovers card. Here we have the Lovers card for all five decks. The coloration is vastly different from deck to deck. 
Well, I say it's vastly different. To me, it's vastly different. You can see a lot of yellow, like in the flames here. There's a good bit of yellow here and here. This one is mostly red in the Centennial. You can see that the face of the angel is pretty much different on the Los Scarabeo version from the, writer, the US Games version. I don't see the red on the eyelids. He just seems to have a slightly different face. And you do see, and there's no red on the clouds. That could just be a coloration choice rather than an actual difference in the drawing. And see how gray this one looks. It just looks kind of sickly. All right, and let's look have a look at the sun card. I think that's the most telling card. Okay, here we have the sun card. And you can see in all of the U.S. games and the A.G. Muller deck, there is this extra little squiggly line. Let me get it right here. There's this extra little squiggly line here right next to this ray and the Roman numeral. I have heard that referred to as the oh shit line. Uh, meaning that she was drawing and she didn't realize that she had come to the end and oh shit I have a squiggle there and that some of the decks have that line on them and some of them don't and this This is distinctly different. There is no extra little squiggle line Apparently it was cleaned up in some later publications because it was seen as a mistake So it was removed but look how much more distance there is between the top of the Sun and the top of the card in the Los Scarabeo version versus versus all of the U.S. Games editions, which it's all kind of cramped, and this one's even more cramped than all of the rest of them. And I would, to be perfectly honest, that face is different enough in this deck from all the other decks that I don't know that I would call it Pixie's artwork. It's a copy of Pixie's artwork. But I so definitely like the colors in this one. Well, there you have it. Um, not really making any judgments or anything, but some comparisons of some Rider Waite Smith decks that I have recently acquired. This one's the one that's available today. This is the Centennial. This one's the Los Scarabeo one, which uh, I think you can get. I don't know if you can get it in the U.S. without purchasing it from overseas because I've never seen it anywhere else. And this is the 80s version and the Mueller version that I recently got off eBay. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.